Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome. We are here in studio talking sports with Val. How you doing today, Val? Well, it's been about a week since we heard the shocking news about the passing of Carlos Ordinio, Steve, and then we're still trying to process it, I guess. Um, just a, 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 obviously just a horrendous tragedy. I talked with Clint Gard earlier in the week. We, we talked about wrestling, obviously, this current Rochester team, but we also spent some time talking about Carlos and you know, it was interesting that Clint Gard didn't want to talk about Carlos the wrestler. He wanted to talk about Carlos the student and about um, all that he did to get himself um, to a spot where he could be, uh, where he could, you know, he he got, he got really improved his grades over the course of his academic career. And he kept coming to, and when he was a junior, he was academic, he, I, I don't think he was, el he was not eligible, and but he still kept coming to practice. And that was his way of showing how committed he was in the year that he had. So I, I, I hope to write about that in the next uh, few days as well. But, uh, yeah, still trying to get over the news. Still yeah. Trying to, uh, this is just uh, shocking, unbelievable news. Yeah, sad news. He was in here in our studio. Uh, we do that one school, one book program with Riddle Elementary. And one of the groups that came in was a group of uh, wrestlers from Rochester, and, and he was in that group. And, yeah, it's it's always tragic when a when a young person loses their life, but someone that has worked as hard as he had, and and you know he was volunteering with North Miami's wrestling program as well, mm -hmm. you know, Coach Coach Arduino. So, um, just a sad thing to have happen. Yeah, and the impact that wrestling had in his whole life. Yeah. Um, you know, we talk. I mean, we talk about what high school sports can mean to people, and and he's a classic example of it. And yeah. Always had a smile on his face. Always. Yeah. Well, uh, thoughts and prayers go out to uh, Carlos's family. I know, um, you know, and, and thanks to the community, the great support. Uh, somebody stepped up even, I heard, and, and paid for his funeral expenses. Yeah. Uh, so, um, you know, there's just a, a big outpouring of uh, support for uh, the family. So we uh, want to send our thoughts and prayers out to uh, to the you know, his immediate family and then his extended family, too, his wrestling family. Yeah, so. yeah. All right, well, let's get started here. we got a lot of stuff to talk about today. We're going to go through and do our highlights first from the girls' basketball from the last week. And then in our uh, second half of the show, we'll come back and we'll do our previews for the boys' basketball. We're going to be getting uh, the boys' season underway next week. Hard to believe, you know, that's already the case. And... Of course, we won't be here next Friday. At least I won't. If you're here, it's, you're going to be doing the show by yourself. But uh, going to take the week off for the Thanksgiving holiday and come back the following week, and we'll have a bunch of stuff to talk about then as well. Let's start off with the Rochester Zebras, who are setting at two and three, but they are one and zero in the conference. Let's uh, before we get to that one and zero, let's start off with the uh, game last Saturday as they were hosting. Northwood. It was the first game of the season for the Panthers as they had some uh, really good success on the volleyball floor, but sure didn't look like Northwood was playing their first game, did no, it? No, they were ready and raring to go, and you know, I, was, I talked with uh, Northwood coach Taylor Burkhardt after the game, and yeah, he, he talked about, I talked about that first quarter, and he was like, yeah, we, they were absolutely ready to go, uh, and they were excited to play, and they got up to, talk about, you know, Winning, win, winning the first quarter of your season 14 to nothing, that's pretty good. Yeah, I think you'll take that, yep. Again, what you're going to see from the highlights is they just played very, very good man-to-man -man defense. There's nothing nothing flashy or other defense. They were just in-your-face defense, and they really rotated well. Um, there's a three-pointer by Riley Clevenger uh, within the, with about the first 15 seconds of the second quarter, but that turned out to be Rochester's only field goal of the first half. Yeah, Aubrey Wilson making a free throw, and it was twenty-five to five Northwood at halftime. Claire Payne, their six-two post player, she's a very, very good player. Not only she's she's not just six-two, but she's an athletic six-two. Second half was much better. Rochester cut down on the turnovers, and basically played Northwood even. It was a nice three, I think, by uh, Wilson. So it was twenty-five to five at halftime. It was thirty-seven to seventeen after three quarters. So again, they played. You know, they played even in the third quarter. It 
there's another three by Wilson. So they, they really, um, you know, were more, uh, you know, they, they, they weren't in such a rush offensively. And I think part of it, too, was obviously Northwood was up by 20-plus points. So maybe they, you don't play with quite the intensity. But there's yeah, Ella McCarter had some nice passes. And I know we talked about that, but uh, Northwood goes on to win 52 to 28. But yeah. and just to put Northwood in perspective, they took Valley to overtime on Tuesday, right? And then routed West. Well, I don't know if routed, but beat West Noble pretty significantly the, uh, on Thursday night. So they're two and one. Yeah, that's a really good Northwood team, and you know, no shame in in that loss there for yeah. the, the Zebras and. You know, they had and, some time to, to come back and, and, you know, work on some things before they opened up their uh, TRC, and uh, they were down at Peru last night. So I'm going to let you walk through this. You were there with Randy. I uh, was not there. So, Yeah, you know, and, and one thing that, um, just to, to give you an idea, uh, one thing that Joel Burris talked about after the Northwood game is we took our offensive woes onto the defensive end. So because we were determined to get back playing much better defensively, and that's what happened at the start of this game. Rochester was really ready to go defensively. Um, and the first bucket of the game, this is Rochester's first possession of the game, and this is going to be a three by Aubrey Wilson as they give her a little too much space. And, you know, talking with Jenna Hayes afterwards, she said she was Wilson was on our scouting report, don't give her space, and we give her a three right away. Mm -hmm. In fact, you get two threes in the first quarter, and then that three by Riley Clevenger made a 13-4, to four, and that was the score after one quarter. And, then, boy, the... A lot of this was just hard work on the boards by Jaden Field. She had six points, but twelve rebounds. That putback made it twenty to seven. Uh, they had a three. They banked in a three pointer in the last second of the first half to get it to twenty to ten. Even Joel Burris said, "I don't even view it as you allowed ten. I viewed it as you allowed seven. Yeah. Um, and meanwhile, the key was that they held Addison Robbins scoreless in the first half. Yeah. And she came in as their leading scorer. This was the last possession of the third quarter. Just a great possession. They work the clock down, and they get a three-pointer by Mia Hadashell with two seconds to go, and Rochester left 30-17 to 17 after three quarters. But that, you know, that's that's a great possession. A lot of teams don't handle those end-of-quarter possessions while Rochester handled it perfectly. Then Peru scores the first seven points of the fourth quarter to get it down to 30-24, and that kind of got the momentum back in Rochester's favor. A three by Riley Clevenger that put them up by nine. Again, Rochester defended the paint pretty well. Uh, you know, Peru doesn't really have a much. Uh, they don't have a true post score. Uh, this is the way the game will end on a put back by Robbins. But this game was would be over at this point, and Rochester goes on to win 38-28. They led by as many as 13. Peru never led in the game. Robbins did have 12, but all in the second half. Um, Clevenger led Rochester with 12. Wilson had eight, including those two three pointers in the first quarter. Uh, and then um, Ella McCarter got a lot more touches in this game mm -hmm. because Ella's a really good passer, and she's she's someone you can, you know, she's strong enough where she can get where she wants to off the dribble, and then she's a very good post passer. She can a uh, very good kick out passer. So she had, Ella had seven, and then Jaden Field, as we mentioned, with six, and also the twelve rebounds. So that's uh, and then uh, Mia Hadashell had three, and Audrey Bollinger had two free throws. So yeah, uh, thirty-eight twenty-eight. They're really. And they only had 11 turnovers. I mean, you know, turnovers were a big problem in the Northwood game, and they really uh, were able to, to keep their hands on the, uh, on the ball this time and were able to handle whatever pressure Peru uh, had to throw at them. So they head down to Bunker Hill tomorrow to take on the uh, McConaughey Braves. McConaughey only 1-2. and two. It's kind of a little bit of a surprise there, 0-1 oh in the conference. Yeah, uh, the loss to Manchester, we, think was, we were a little bit surprised by that, but then McConaughey lost to Western 52-21 to on Tuesday. That's a... Very good Western very, team. Very, yeah. very good Western team. And we'll talk about Western a little bit later on in this show because I saw Western play in person on Wednesday night. But, yeah, uh, it's a McConaughey team. Uh, they, you know, they've got two. There's another Stoll. There's Aubrey Stoll. She's a freshman to go with Miranda Stoll. I believe that's my Stoll. got my Stoll sisters correctly. Mm -hmm. Correct. And then, of course, the Mabins. And then, uh, it's a, but it's a McConaughey team that I think, you know, they, they're playing four freshmen on the varsity. So Are they? Uh, it's a pretty young team to go. But then they've got uh, Aubrey Stoll being one of the four. And then, but then they've got... Uh, Moran, who's a senior, so uh, mm -hmm. it'll be interesting to see how it all meshes together. But I think this is a pretty deep McConaughey team. Mm -hmm. And then uh, they head to Valley on Tuesday for the non-conference game with the Vikings. Right, and <laughs> uh, you know Valley is uh, obviously having a very good year. They just suffered their first loss to Western the other day, but this is a again a, another really good uh, Valley defensive team. So it'll be interesting to see how Rochester, if they've improved offensively. 
uh, to where they can really uh, function offensively. Of course, last year they lost 26 to 15 at Valley. But and of course, it's just a. I mean, it's not a conference game, but they're sectional rivals, so it's a huge game still. Right. All right. See how they do here. It's going to be a big one tomorrow night at McConaughey, taking on the Braves, trying to keep their uh, TRC win streak going. One and zero in the conference, taking on the zero and one conference McConaughey Braves. Mm-hmm. For the Argus Dragons, uh, kind of a tough week. They're sitting at one and four. Uh, this one here, we were. Uh, well, I was up there for the uh, game with Winnemac, and you know, it, I guess uh, you know this Winnemac team, and we'll talk about them a little bit too, obviously, because we're uh, kind of co- combining this with both of them. But I mean, this is a Winnemac team, Coach Stasiak, in his second year there with the program. It's a different looking team. Oh isn't my it? gosh! Yeah. And you know, a lot of it starts with uh, the younger kids. You know, Sadie Popejoy. Where did she come from? She is a, you know, yeah, I told she's you. a great player. Yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, Samantha Redinger had a, had another big game in this one. I think she ended up with 30 in the in the game here with Winnemac. But, uh, you know, the, the Warriors would just hang around and kind of went back and forth there. You know, Morgan Barkas, she's starting to find her rhythm a little bit there. Hits a three-pointer for Argus and, you know, Nine eight, as we wind down this first quarter, and you know, right there, Piper Link, she had a great game as well for the Warriors. Um, you can just see Piper's just playing with a lot more confidence. I know Coach Daisy said she played a little bit bang. She played last year, but she was injured most of the year and just was yeah. never 100. percent You know, she's feeling a lot better this year, and really able to score over taller opponents. She's not the what you call a typical post player, but she can score in the post. Croft with a uh, good shot there. It's a four-point lead here for the Warriors, but Morgan Barkas likes that spot right there on that uh, left sideline, hitting another three-pointer for the Dragons. You know, the the thing with Sam, obviously, you know, she's just a super talented player, but she can score at all three levels, Mm -hmm. and that's what makes her so dangerous because you can't overplay her at the three because she'll drive on you. And if you try and jam in the lane, she's just going to stand out there and hit threes on you all day long. I mean, just her improvement, um, not not improvement like she wasn't good before, but I think just the consistency. Mm-hmm. You know, she just has that consistency. I mean, so far her low was 19 against Triton. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's her lowest game of the year is 19. Yeah. This third quarter was uh, just a, a run – First, Winnemac would would make a run and take a big lead, and then uh, the Dragons would answer. And it was a really good game. I thought it was a well played game, well coached game. Both Coach Stasiak and Coach Jennings, you know, have a lot of experience on the bench. And you know, Coach Duncan for the for the Dragons. I mean, he's he has really. You can tell the girls just really love yeah. playing for Coach Duncan and. I think he's yeah. really embraced that role. Yeah, of, Coach uh, Jennings has talked about Coach Duncan and how he's really very good at just player development. Yeah, Lydia Lead with a big three there for the Dragons, and Argus back out in front by three at the end of three. Yeah, I think they went close that quarter like a fourteen to four run or a fourteen to two, two a fourteen to two run. Yeah, yeah fourteen to two after Winnemac had had a big run of their own, they had taken a big lead. Kind of looked like Winnemac was going to pull away. There's uh, Redinger with another three. Dragons up one at this point. But uh, Piper Link would uh, she just had a really good night. I think she had 16 or 17 mm. for that one. Yeah. 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 I think 17. Yeah. And that was a career high. Croft way outside there with a three pointer. And again, Winnemac can really spread the floor with Croft, Pope, Joy, and Smith all capable of shooting from the outside. And that would put the Warriors up. Now they're up two with less than a minute or just about a minute to go. And that was the basket, I forget who that put them ahead, what, 57-55 in the last second? Yeah. Argus had one last chance. And they were not able to get a shot off. 
and the Warriors would win 57-55. Non-conference game for the last time. It'll mm-hmm. be a conference game next year for the uh, Warriors and the Dragons there. So, you know, Argus at that point was still looking for a, a win and uh, had not found one. And here's the here's the game we were not there for, but uh, taking on Elkhart Christian on Saturday night. And this would yeah. be... Uh, and if you thought Samantha Redinger was good against Winnemac, wait till <laughs> you see this video. Yeah, this was a historic night. She broke uh, the school record for single-game scoring that was, of course, held by Courtney Dunlap. Yeah, and, she obliterated the record. I mean, yeah. nobody had ever scored 40 before, yeah. and Courtney's record was 39. I thought it was 36. 30, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, Sam went in with 47. You said she had six three-pointers, which would tie her uh, with Macy Stricker. And mm-hmm. um, I said Val, but I, I think it's actually Kelsey. Mm-hmm. I think Kelsey okay. Hollibaugh. I don't think it's Val. but Okay, that, that, yeah, that, I wouldn't be surprised by that, yeah. Six three-pointers on the night for uh, Sam Redinger to go with 47. I said that right, 47 points. And it was all Argus. It was all Samantha Redinger in this game. Uh, 67 points, so all but 20 of the points mm-hmm. belong to uh, number 10 in white. She's averaging 32 and a half a game, Val. Yeah, I mean, she's got to be one of the leading scorers in the state so yeah, far. Yeah, I mean, that's... I was, I was a little surprised she didn't win State Player of the Week, to be honest with you. Right. But... And that's a pretty move there, a little uh, Magic-esque, kind of the fake pass and finishes with a Euro. But, I mean, she was just hitting inside, outside, driving to the paint. You know, Ellie Bolenbacher with a nice drive there. She's Yeah, she had 11 in this game. Yeah, she's starting to get her rhythm. Um, you know, she missed the first game for the FFA convention. And they're going to need her to uh, to be a contributor. You know, if the Dragons are going to get su- be successful again in the postseason, they're going to definitely need Ellie Bolenbacher to be a, a big contributing factor for yeah. Argus. Yeah. By the way, in case you were wondering, uh, Samantha Redinger was taken out of this game with four minutes to go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So they had to zero uh, and four Trinity tonight, and then they have a big home game on Tuesday night with the Culver Cavaliers the bell game. So. Right, and Argus has really dominated the recent rivalry with Culver. Uh, I don't think Coach Jennings has ever lost to Culver, in fact. so No, they haven't lost the Bell game since it became a Bell game for yeah. the girls, which was back in 2017, I think. I think so, yeah. yeah so. And, of course, their first meeting since that crazy triple overtime game in last year's sectional. Yep. All right, we got to keep moving here. Let's take a break. We'll come back. We'll talk about Caston and Culver here in our next segment on Talking Sports with Val. When it comes to legal needs, you want to make sure that you have the best team in your corner. Here at Peterson, Wagoner, and Perkins, we strive to provide you with the highest quality legal and professional service. Whatever your needs are, from estate planning and trusts to appeals and guardianships, Peterson, Wagoner, and Perkins has the knowledge and experience to serve you now and in the future. Stop on by to Inyards Hardware for all your home project needs. With a broad selection of garden supplies, tools, and paints featuring brands like Milwaukee, Diablo, and their newest paint line Valspar, you can be sure that Inyards will supply you with the most top rated equipment. And if you need something for a quick job, check out Inyards Rental Selection to get you going. Stop on in at 1619 Main Street, Rochester, or call 574 223 4920 to see how Inyards friendly staff can help you. Pacesetters Real Estate knows that buying and selling properties can be a tough and complicated task. That's why we are here to provide you with our full service process where we walk with you every step of the way. Whether you're looking to buy a home or you're looking to sell, Pacesetters Real Estate is here for you. Call 574-223-5000 or visit us online at www.pacesettersre.net. At 
First Federal Savings Bank, you can bank on the go. With the First Federal Savings Bank mobile app, you can check account balances, transfer money, view account history, deposit your checks, and pay your bills. If you want your mobile banking done easy, download the First Federal Savings Bank mobile app today. The app is available for both Apple and Android phones and tablets. Just type in First Federal Savings Bank in the search bar and look for the white star with the green background. Welcome back here, talking sports with Val, and uh, let's move on to the cast and comments. Val, they continue with their hot streak. They are just on fire. Six and zero oh, as we speak. You were there. They went to North White and pretty much obliterated the Vikings, fifty-seven to fifteen. Yeah, you know it was interesting. I was talking with Isabel Scales after this game, and she was like, "Yeah, well, you know, tomorrow night we're playing Win and Max. That's really the more important game. You know, that's the game we've really been focusing on." And then she paused and she goes, "Yeah, but I've had this game circled on my calendar also. Yeah, also. Yeah. And after losing to North White in last year's sectional, they were very, very ready to go. They forced, I think, I think they forced 17 turnovers in the first quarter." And they got out to a huge lead, and uh, they wound up winning 57-15. to 15. Uh, Isabel Scales had 18 to lead the way, um, 14 for Addison Zimpleman, even though she was in foul trouble for a lot of the night. Uh, you know, Maddie Douglas continues to just do what she does, which is play really good defense and, you know, score, you know, usually right, right around 10, 12 points a game. Mm -hmm. And then uh, starting to get, you know, even – even more contributions from some other players as well. So, yeah, they were they were definitely ready. You know, Macy Hinderleiter because she's you can tell she's just a much improved player as well. I mean, not that she would, and not that she wasn't good before. And Annie Harsh is really, I mean, they they you know they don't beat themselves on top of all that. So they were they were really raring to go, and they wound up winning fifty seven to fifteen. Yeah, against the North White team that has no seniors. Yeah, and uh, you know Autumn Reif had ten of their fifteen. You know, she's a very good post player, but uh, Caston just kind of kept kept better track of her in the second half. Yeah. So talk about that Winnemac game, the Warrior or the uh, Comets at the Warriors then on Saturday night. You were there for that one as well. Yeah, Caston, um, again, Caston uh, didn't have any big long runs like they did in the North White game, but they just kind of gradually pushed out their lead here. They never got so far ahead where you felt too comfortable, but Winnemac never got so close where – if you're a Caston fan, you're really, really sweating this game out. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of the way I felt watching it. Yeah, never really felt like uh, Winnemac was in danger of winning it, but you never really felt like Caston was in danger of losing it. Yeah. Either. And again, what's so great about Caston is that. You know, Maddie Douglas, even though she's the point guard, she's not the only player who can handle the ball. They've got a number of players who can handle the ball. We saw Olivia Thomas, uh, I, think, I think that was uh, Olivia hitting a jumper. She had four points in this game. And really, you have a nice contribution when Winnemac was starting to kind of get back into the game. I think Olivia was, it wasn't just the four points. You know, she was really active on the boards. And yeah, she gives the, the comments another big inside yeah. as well. She's probably one of the taller players uh, on the team, so... They can get some uh, contributions from her as well as Scales and Zibelman and Hindelighter and yeah. you know Harsh. I she's just had a really good start to the year as well. Yeah, that sequence at the end of the half was big. It was twenty-one fourteen. Winnemac was at the line for two free throws. They missed both, and then Zibelman leaked out for a layup at the buzzer. It was a great pass by Maddie Douglas. But if you're Winnemac, you're thinking maybe hey maybe we can get this down to five at halftime instead of they're down by nine. And that was a big three early in the second half by Douglas that put the, put the lead from six back to nine. You know, and mm -hmm. as, as you get a freshman coming in with a senior-dominated team like this, you, you kind of wonder what's that going to do to the chemistry. But just like everything else that cast in these girls, I mean, Maddie Douglas just seems like she's been playing with them for years. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, there's no assimilation issues at all. Right, right. And... Yeah, you could just tell the way she interacts with them as well. She's not the – she doesn't seem like the new kid. Uh, of course, being a coach's kid, she she has pretty good head on her shoulders as far as basketball goes as well. Yeah. And Cass would, would hit enough free throws down the stretch. They pulled away to win 47-33. to 
I talked with Winnipeg coach Tony Stasiak after the game. He goes, he goes, yeah, we, you know, it was the second half of a back-to-back for both teams. But he goes, we went down to the wire against Argus, and they were probably able to rest their players against North White. And I think that's what, I think that was a little bit of what happened too. I mean, that Cast and Ar- that Winnipeg Argus game on Friday was a pretty, mm-hmm. pretty intense up and down game. And meanwhile, Cast was able to rest their starters in the fourth quarter against North White. And he, he thought that was something of a factor as well. And one more game here for Caston as they were hosting Rossville here on Tuesday night back at home. And uh, hard to believe, but that's going to be their last game until the uh, Cass County Tournament tips off on the 29th. So they got a uh, nice little stretch here to kind of recoup. And Right. I mean, right. And, yeah, just a weird schedule. This was, what, their sixth game in 13 days and then 15 days off. But <laughs> this was their sixth game in 13 days, so you, you wonder about the energy. Uh, Didn't seem to be an issue. Yeah. But, I mean, defensively they had more. You know, you know, you would notice a lack of energy if they didn't have it on the defensive end, and they more than had it. This was – uh, the fewest points Rossville's had since January of 2022. And if you go back even further than that, the last time they had fewer than 18 was like uh, 2016. So this cast and team is just, they're just hard to score on. When you combine both their physicality, their speed, and the fact that they're just well coached. Mm-hmm. Uh, and of course, they spread the ball so well. And, and we've talked about this before. If you try to play zone against Cast, and they can shoot over the top of it. And if you try to play man, well, good luck guarding Isabel Scales and Addison Zimbelman. Right. Man, uh, man to man, and they're they're so tough to keep track of. Remember, that's a Rossville team that won their sectional last year. They lost to Tri Central in the regional, but that's a it's not a bad Rossville team at all. So twenty-one to nine at halftime. And there's that baseline jumper that Scales has that's just lethal. There are not a lot of girls who can make that move, and she makes it look easy. Uh, Scales led the way with fifteen, Simpleman at twelve, and Douglas had eleven. So that's what thirty-eight of the forty-two. Uh, that move right there, I mean, there's just nothing anybody's going to do mm-hmm. to to stop that short of being a college post player that's playing at D1 level. I mean, she's just so strong. You know, that cast and strength and conditioning uh, program has really taken off. I know you talked about Gina Hurlmeyer really getting that going over at Valley when she was over there. Yeah. And she kind of brought that same philosophy to cast and right. With her uh, athletic director ten, tenure there, and right, and you know Brandon Kinzer is the guy who kind of he's in the weight room every day with most of those kids, girls and boys. So yeah, like, he deserves a shout out as well. So uh, they won forty two eighteen, and they're now six and zero. Oh. Yeah, six and zero oh going into the uh, Cass County tournament, and you got to think it's going to be an interesting uh, first round game for them because they take on Lewis Cass, and Lewis Cass is. You know, had a good start to their season. So, yeah. can Lewis Cass give Cass in the game? I've talked to some people who've seen Lewis Cass in person. They have a foreign exchange student, Hedda, Hedda Kosinen. Okay. I don't know where she's from. Is she from somewhere in Europe, I think? Uh, she's She's been playing great for them. And then hmm. Afton Griffin at 23 the other night against. Yeah. I mean, we liked her last year as a point guard, but we didn't know she was looking to score. But now she's looking to score. She had 23. They beat Kokomo the other night. Yeah. Uh, you know, Kyle Amor, and, you know, they've got that zone defense going. We've talked about. Uh, uh, Menon and, and, and their bigs, Menon and Logan. So it's it's mm-hmm. a pretty well-balanced uh, Lewis Cass team. I'm really looking forward to that game. Yeah, they've, they've uh, kind November of put the TRC on notice as well with that big win against Manchester. Yeah, Wednesday, November 29th. Uh, I think it's at Caston. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So should be a good one there. The uh, Culver Cavaliers setting at 2-4, and 0-1 oh in the conference. They pick up a big win uh, at home versus Westville on Saturday, 46-40, to 40, which – Kind of leads you to wonder because you know we saw Winnemac lose that game to Westville uh, 53-50 a, a week or so ago, so that sets up the game uh, at Winnemac here on Tuesday as the Cavaliers and the Warriors a big conference game for both teams. Yeah, I was at this game and uh, you know uh, Adam and AG Nice are the co-coaches. Um, 
Adam is the offensive coordinator, and AJ is the defensive coordinator. And um, again, I give the, I give the guys credit. I mean, they've been, they've coached these girls for three weeks, mm-hmm. and yet this the, I think they've really kind of kept things simple in terms of the you know just make sure there's good spacing. Um, you know, they've got some two good shooters in Brianna Schlemmer and Alexa O'Brien. And then Grace Sieber can shoot it as well, but Grace is more of a, you can tell Grace is, she can score, but I think her, she's most comfortable or she understands that she needs to get her other teammates involved. And they've got a nice young freshman in Brooke Davis, who's got, you know, um, she's got kind of a good combination of size and athleticism. And, uh, but again, you know, and, uh, Culver got off to a good start in this game. They were up seven to four. And then they, uh, Winnemac went on a 10-0 run to go 14 to seven, and that is a three-pointer. I'm trying to remember if that was O'Brien. I think that was O'Brien who got it to 14-12. But Winnemac always seemed to have the answer. Now, uh, now one now an issue that Winnemac had in this game was that Candace cropped her her leg. It looked like it looked like a leg or a like a quad injury. And they were really working on it, and she came back in the game. So if you see the box score and you see that Candace scored zero points, that, first of all, I would say, obviously you need to realize she was injured for much of the game, but also you need to realize that she, when she came back, Winnemac played real, a lot better, even though she was maybe more of a distributor in this game. They were up 14-12 to 12 when, she, when she came back. They closed the half on a 6-0 run to get it to 20-12. to 12. And then they went on this other, they went on another 10-0 run in the third quarter to go up 32 uh, 15, but then all of a sudden Culver goes on a run, and um, it was 32-20 after three quarters, and then first two possessions of the third quarter, three-pointer by Sieber, and then this three-pointer by O'Brien, and all of a sudden it's a six-point game at 32-26. And then the Sadie Pope Joyce show started. There's one three. And this is a tough three. Yeah, Amaya Williams, Williams is right in her yeah. face, and she drills it. Yeah, and so they go in an 8-0 run. They made it 40-26. to 26. You got an almost six-footer running at you with her hand up, and you were able to bury a three in front of her. That's impressive. And I talk with Sadie. She's worked with Antonio Penny, mm-hmm. uh, who I know you know uh, him, Steve. And um, Sadie said, boy, he's given, he's given me a lot of confidence, and he's taught me to put some arc on my shot. If larger defenders come out at me, and uh, again, you know, two words that Tony Stasek used to describe Sadie Pope Joy: no fear. Mm-hmm. And she scored 19. And but again, it it was it wasn't. Yeah, I mean, she took over in the fourth quarter, but they also got eight from Smith, um, eight from Marissa Iverson, who's much improved, and seven points and ten boards from Piper Link. Yeah, who just is. You know, she's another. Speaking of fearless, Piper Link's pretty fearless too. Yeah. As for Culver, um, again, for wh- what they've, what those two coaches have done in such a short period of time, I, I I'm actually, I'm quite impressed that they, with that they've won two games already, beat a pretty good Westville team. Yeah, yeah, and then uh, you know, tough one last night. They go to Elkhart Christian and lose twenty nine thirty nine. So, you know, we we saw that Elkhart Christian team. Uh, you know, Argus kind of handled them pretty handily. So. Um, a big game coming up for for Culver tomorrow night as uh, Pioneer is in town. You know the Panthers looking for their first win of the season. They're zero and one in the conference as well as the Cavaliers. So, you know that's that's a big one for both. Of Good those point teams. guard matchup with McKenna Stricker and Grace Sieber. I don't know if they'll necessarily be guarding each other man man to man, but but good kind of. Because they're both experienced. I mean, Grace is a senior, McKenna is a junior, but you know, kind of experienced point guards in that game. And then they head, uh, like we said, to Argus then on Tuesday for that bell game. So, yeah. uh, you know, they're going to want to try and uh, get that bell back to, to Culver for the first time. So it's a, it's going to be an interesting uh, couple days here before uh, before we get to Thanksgiving and see how the Cavaliers can fare. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's take But it. I want to give a shout-out to Amaya Williams. I think she's really improved her game as well. Yeah. Let's take another quick break. When we get back, we'll talk some Pioneer Valley and a little bit more Winnemac. We talked a lot of Winnemac already, but we'll do that here in our final girls basketball segment. When we get back, talking sports with Val. Kriskin's Pools and Spas is your local contractor for all your pool and hot tub installation needs. 
With a wide selection to choose from, Kriskins is sure to hook you up with exactly what you need no matter what your budget is. To learn more about our services, visit KriskinsPoolsAndSpas.com, call 574-857-3100, or stop on by at 7448 Liberty Avenue in Fulton to see how Kriskins can help you. Here we go, Billy. Swing hard. As your local agent, I know you. I know every Saturday, your son Billy plays Little League. We sponsor his team. And we know you love parking way too close to the field. That's why we tailor a unique policy for you and your car. Because sometimes, something from out of left field can literally come from out of left field. That's simple human sense. Ask the Jennings Insurance Agency in Argus and Rochester if auto owners make sense for you. Looking for an easy way to provide custom branded products for your business, school, sports team, or fundraising event? Let the Winning Edge set up a customized web store that features branded products tailored to your business, school, church, or charitable cause. With a wide variety of customizable apparel, sports accessories, office accessories, and custom tumblers, the Winning Edge is sure to provide you with the best style that suits you. Find your edge by calling 574-223-6090 or going to our website, thewinningedgeathletics.com, and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Hello, sir. How can I help you today? I'm looking for a special gift. We have no tolerance for tomfoolery today. What do you mean, tomfoolery? What I said was, we have a nice selection of jewelry today. Oh. May I suggest that you give my friends at Affordable Hearing a call? Affordable Hearing offers hearing testing and unique solutions for everybody. We guarantee the lowest prices in the area and now have offices in Rochester and Logansport to serve you better. Call to book an appointment today. Welcome back here, talking sports with Val on a Friday afternoon. Let's talk a little bit about the Pioneer Panthers. Finally got their season underway here on Tuesday. Uh, rough start, you know, young team, young squad, taking on a very, very with a new good, coach with a new coach as well. Yeah, yeah, brand new coach. Mm -hmm. <laughs> about a week and a half into it, uh, actually about a week at that point into it. Uh, taking on a very good Clinton Central team as they open up their season. Fifth game of the year for this Clinton Central team. Very senior-led team. They had four senior starters to go with the sophomore point guard, uh, Davison. And uh, it was going to be a tough test anyway. Coach Barry you know, mentioned that they were kind of looking at this as more of a kind of a scrimmage because they knew it was just going to be really hard. Uh, Kenzie Hathaway, and one of the new starters there, junior four uh, Pioneer, gets the bucket on that one. But it's going to be a lot of uh, that. That's Davison, the, the sophomore point guard for Clinton Central. She had a, a big night, as did Sarah Parkinson, the, the big man in the middle. She uh, played really well. Freshman right there, mm -hmm. Lois Lair. Mm-hmm. Of course, she might look familiar because she, she looks just like her cousins, the mm -hmm. Haley and uh, Adeline Kripe. But all, <laughs> all Clinton Central here in this one is they are up 43-5. to five. Second half, you, you saw a little improvement there. Layer would hit a uh, three-pointer there. I really like, uh, I really like Lois. Uh, another freshman uh, that has done well for them, Jocelyn Kane. And there's uh, a promising-looking sophomore, Hannah Ziegler, uh, to go, mm -hmm. uh, you know. So yeah, how, how tall is Hannah? She's about 5'10". Uh, 5'10", yeah. yeah. Yeah, she's got a good yeah. size to her, her. Her brother played on the boys' team, what graduated in 2022. Yeah, 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 I think so. Jacob, uh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, loss there to start the season, uh, and again, Last night they had a, another tough one. They started off really well against Knox. You know, first conference game of the year. They were trailed by four at the end of one, 13 to nine, but didn't score in the second quarter. And, and Knox outscored them 10 to nothing. And so it was a 14 point lead, and, and they would end up going on. Knox would win 47 uh, 24. The, the thing, you know, early with the Panthers, 20 turnovers against Clinton Central, 24 turnovers against Knox. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of. Like we said, a lot of young players, and uh, you know McKenna's uh, not doing bad. It's not really necessarily you know point guard turnovers. It's just a lot of uh, 
unforced stuff, actually. I mean, mm-hmm. people just making passes to people that aren't there or people not catching passes. Right, just, which is a common thing when players haven't played a lot of basketball together with each other. Yeah, and, you know, there's a lot of uh, a lot of people that haven't played varsity level, mm-hmm. you know, so they're, they're having to come up to speed and, and figure things out in a hurry. And, you know, we talked about that game at Culver tomorrow night. That's going to be a big one for the uh, Panthers as well because, you know, very – very similar situation, Culver mm-hmm. and Pioneer. You know, a lot of graduations last year. Mm-hmm. Some players didn't come out this year. Right. And a late, late coaching change. Mm-hmm. I mean, both teams kind of dealing with the same type of stuff. So uh, it's going to be interesting. And then uh, Tuesday, um, Pioneer goes to Wabash. Wabash, oh, my gosh, you talk about TRC. Wabash has got to get into that mix. They just beat number two, Lapel. Yeah, maybe the upset of the year in the northern half of the state so yeah. far. They beat LaPel 70 to 65. Briley Boggs had 25, and Caitlin Honeycutt had 21 in that game. That's 46 of their 70. But this is a. Uh, Boggs, really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. 25 against LaPel. Yeah. So I didn't know. I didn't even know she played basketball, but if she's scoring 25 against LaPel, yeah. she's the real deal in the basketball court. We know she's a great volleyball player already, so yeah. That's a Wabash team that. Didn't look very good earlier in the year. Lost to Culver Academy. I wonder if they were missing a player or two. Yeah, yeah, boy, that's a that's a big win against a uh, very good lapel team. Yeah, was not, not to badmouth Culver Academy. They're a good team, but I mean, Wabash got blown out in that game. I mean, yeah, they, they have improved a lot. So kudos to Coach Stone and his staff. Yeah, well, he's got a little experience. Yeah, he's been there for a while. Yeah. So yeah, it's going to be a tough one here. And then, uh, you know, the, the Panthers hitting the road. They've got. Uh, I think the next five games on the road, including the Cass County tournament. So mm-hmm. we'll see what uh, what they can do. Coach Barry and he's got a very young squad trying to put some things together there. Yeah, pi- uh, yeah. Pioneer Drew Logan Sport in the Cass County tournament. They're going to play uh, the Barry Bowl on the 28th, I think, Tuesday yeah. the 28th. Yeah. yeah, they play the day before Cass and then mm-hmm. lose Cass. So we'll see what they can do there. And, uh, you know, we'll just take it from take it one day at a time, right? Yeah. Uh, Tiffany Valley five and one and defeated Northwestern on Saturday. A big win, sixty-seven twenty-nine. Fifteen points for Carly Snyder in that game. Yeah, yeah we saw Northwestern against high. Rochester. Yeah, uh, that's a young squad there that's kind of struggling, struggling, just trying to find some cohesiveness and yeah. just a new coach and a lot of new players who haven't played together very much. Yeah. The big one I thought uh, was the road win Tuesday night. They go to Northwood and uh, win forty-six thirty-eight against the. Uh, Panthers. Yeah, Gabby Gonzalez with 15 points, um, a career high, and I mean she is. I mean she's a special point guard. I mean you look at her and she's maybe she's maybe a little bit unassuming because she's like five five, but she's really quick and she just, you can just tell she just loves to play. She's got very good basketball instincts. Um, she understands what a point guard's job is, and with put her and Chesney Miller on top of that two three zone, and they are they are going to cause you problems mm-hmm. with their quickness. And then, um, you know, on top of that, how about 11 points for Ava Smith? I mean, Ava's really come on this year. And, uh, you know, she she knows, and again, and on top of that, she gives you good defense because she's really athletic. So, mm-hmm. you know, it was interesting talking to some of the Valley fans and talking about how sloppy the game at Northwood was and how many turnovers there were. And it's just amazing. It's like, hey, you beat Northwood at the Panther Pit. Mm-hmm. Enjoy, enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, do, what Valley's, do what Valley's record is is at the Panther Pit all time. I don't know what it is either, but it's not good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they've now beaten Northwood five consecutive times. That is really saying something. Yeah. Big win there. and You know, kind of a weird back-to-back, middle-of-the-week type of situation there. They go to Northwood and then follow that up with a trip to Western then on Wednesday. And, you know, Western is a very, very good team. And, yeah. And, you know, uh, that they gave uh, Valley their first loss of the season, 37-44. That Western team is tough as nails. Mm-hmm. They are tough. And, you know, Misty Oliver is the coach there. She used to be an assistant coach at Rochester. Many of you might remember Misty. Yeah. She was on Lisa Pfluger's staff. Um, Is it Mackenzie York? Mackenzie York is our point guard. She is tough. I mean, she is, I mean, she is just, you know, she's, she's actually, you know, Misty Oliver kind of took York out and just kind of gave her a breather. Just, it wasn't so much a breather, it was just kind of give her a mental break. Like, hey, you got to get your other teammates involved here. And, but she is, she's really good. And, uh, you know they've got a big girl in Smith, McKenna Smith, who's a very good player. They've got a, and they've got two or three shooters. Uh, Chloe Hunt averages 18 a game. Valley held her to four. Hmm. Valley did a great job on her. It was the backup 
uh, post, Elise Walden, who's a sophomore, and she had 10, and she had 6 of her 10 in the fourth quarter. Uh, the game was tied 36-36 with about four minutes to go. Western outscored Valley 8-1 to to close out the game and win 44-37. Hmm. So, and talk with Coach Chris Kindag afterwards, he just said they kind of ran out of gas a little bit there. And again, it was a second night in a row, mm -hmm. on the road for the second night in a row, playing an overtime game the previous night. And on top of that, Ava Egolf, she led Valley with 16, but she also um, got hurt in the second quarter. Thankfully, she came back in the game, but without her, they only scored, I think, two points in the or three points in the second quarter. Without her, they didn't have a field goal. Ava got off to a great start. She had three threes in the first quarter. But they just really, Valley just really struggled offensively against a very good Western team. It was a really good cat and mouse game back and forth. Teams, you know, Western can play man and zone. Valley can play man and zone. Both teams can press. So it was, it was a good game. It was, a, it was like a sectional, almost even like a regional type of feel to mm -hmm. that game. That Western team is going to win a lot of games. Yeah, and they're going to be a factor in that Hoosier North, that Hoosier Hoosier Conference race. Right, the Hoosier Conference. So uh, a big one coming up tomorrow night is Glenn goes to uh, Death Valley. Right, and of course, you a lot know, of a lot of tie-ins there. Obviously, right, Ted Hayden is the JV coach. Yeah. Was the coach there? His daughter Lucy is now playing at Valley as well. Yeah, so. uh, Valley's gonna want. Yeah, Valley's gonna want that one. And uh, you know, the first meeting since last year's sectional final when Valley won in a real dogfight of a game where John Glenn just hung in there and hung in there and hung in there, just kind of ran out of time at the end. So uh, we'll see again. It's a, it's a John Glenn team. It's going to be a different looking John Glenn team. But then again, you can say it's a different looking Valley team too. With mm -hmm. a, um, uh, so, but uh, Ava Egolf has really uh, stepped up. She she actually hurt her. We were worried that she hit her head on the floor. Actually, she hurt her neck. Um, the Western player's knee hit her neck, but she was like a neck spasm. Mm -hmm. But she was. They put some ice on. She was able to come back. So that's good. But with Gonzalez, Chesney Miller's increased her scoring as well. So again, I I, I wouldn't be too upset about Valley with that loss. But obviously, with John Glenn and Rochester coming up, those are key games coming up because they're both sectional opponents. Yeah. And by the way, uh, Caden Smollett is not going to Franklin College anymore. She will be attending Grace College and playing basketball there, uh, and she will be eligible starting in December. Oh, okay. Uh, there, was an there was an academic issue where she didn't like uh, what Franklin, uh, she, there was a particular major she was interested in, and Franklin wasn't offering it. But Grace College does offer it, so she's, uh, she got a release, and she's going to go to Grace College. Yeah. And it was an amicable parting of the ways, I think, with Franklin, Yeah, as far as I know. So Cadence yeah. is going to Grace College, and she will be eligible to play later this season. Yeah. I, I really like Coach Davis up there. Uh, he's just a, a high-energy guy, their, mm -hmm. their head coach. I mean, mm -hmm. just a, if you haven't met him, he's from Alabama. Mm -hmm. He's got a lot of that southern charm <laughs> to him, too. The, the kids really love him as well, so... Uh, yeah, and you talked about that big game coming up on Tuesday at home for Valley against Rochester as well. Non-conference game this year, but uh, obviously, you know, sectional, uh, possible sectional yeah. opponent and uh, just a rival. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Winnemac, you know, boy, you just you just can't say enough about what Coach Stasiak has done with this team. Four and two, they've already matched their win total from last season. Right. And 50, Fifty-three to seventeen last night over North White to cap off the. A yeah. pretty busy uh, last week of what three games in six days or so, what, you know, yeah. something like that. And they got another one. They're going to be uh, heading on the road to take on Manchester. That should be a good one. Both. Yeah, it really should be a good game. I mean, because you got you know kind of experienced point guards with Candace Croft for Winnemac and Brooklyn Buzzard for Manchester. Buzzard may be a little bit more of a scorer than Candace is, but Candace can score as well. Uh, but it, it should be an, that should be a very good game. I mean, Winnemac has played good zone. How will their zone work against Manchester? Who can I think can shoot it pretty well. Yeah. The uh, but Manchester's got some bigs too. Yeah, the Squires started off zero uh, and two, but they won their last two, so they're setting at two and two here coming into this one. So. Yeah, I want to give a shout out to Marissa Iverson too. She's boy, she she's really improved as well. Mm -hmm. She had Iverson and Link in the front court, and then Smith, Pope, Joy, and and Croft. I mean, that's a solid. That's a solid starting five. It is. It is or, or, a lot or, more size. Yeah, and then, this year than yeah, they had. Well, yeah, actually, Lily Bennett's been starting as well for Winnemac, mm -hmm. and Iverson usually comes off the bench. But Lily and Lily's doesn't score much, but she's kind of does all the dirty work type of plays. Yeah. All right, that's going to wrap it up here for girls basketball. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to give you some boys basketball previews as the season kicks off next week for the boys. We'll be right back. Mike Anderson in Rochester is here to set you up with a new set of wheels. 
From coming on the lot to driving off in your new dream car, Mike Anderson strives to give you the smoothest dealership experience. Not only that, but Mike Anderson in Rochester is here to lend a hand with their service center to keep your ride running. Stop on in for a test drive or call today at 574-223-2711 to see how Mike Anderson in Rochester can steer you in the right direction. Since 1974, Steve Moore Agency has provided the City of Rochester with customized insurance solutions that will fit your needs. With a variety of coverage policies for business, home, auto, life, and more, Steve Moore Agency is sure to cover all your insurance needs. Call now at 574-223-3010 or stop on in at 602 East 9th Street to see what Brody Moore at Steve Moore Agency can do for you. At Webb's Family Pharmacy, we strive to provide our community with a better alternative. We respect the many choices our patients have when it comes to health care needs. When they choose us, we go above and beyond to offer them personalized service and care that will consistently remind them of why we are a superior choice to other pharmacies. Pharmacy care should be proactive when possible. It should be customized to patient needs. It should strive for better health outcomes. It should help manage costs. At Webb's Family Pharmacy, our mission is to provide the pharmacy care you deserve. Fulton County REMC is proud to offer the Operation Roundup Charitable Giving Program. Through Operation Roundup, Fulton County REMC is able to give to local organizations and communities by simply rounding up your monthly bill and donating the change. Since its inception, Operation Roundup has generated over 50 million in charitable donations throughout 260 electric cooperatives. To learn more about this great program, visit www.fultoncountyremc.com or call in at 574-223-3156. Welcome back here, talking sports with Val, and uh, let's talk some uh, Rochester Zebras boys basketball. Rob Malco coming back for his 16th season, seventh season here in stint number two for Coach Malco. They open up their season on Wednesday against Culver, and uh, the Zebras were 11 and 10 last season, and you know, obviously some. Some pretty big graduation losses. Right. You lose Paul Leisure, you lose Aiden Smith, you lose Brock Bowers, uh, you lose Ethan Medina, and you lose Luke Hunting to graduation. That's a lot to 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 lose. And then on top of that, we've got some bad news to report in that Xavier Vance. It's, it's bad news, but it's not shocking news. Xavier mm. Vance is out for the season. He had knee surgery earlier in this week, yeah. uh, right knee injury, suffered during football season. So now you've got your, your big center is out. So this is going to be... Uh, an interesting team. They're, they've got a bunch of guys between like six feet and six two. Mm-hmm. They're not tiny, except for well, Drew Bowers is five eight. They're not tiny, <laughs> but they're not huge they're, either. Yeah, I think it's going to be a pretty athletic team. Uh, we're going to see kind of. I, I'm curious to see, some of the practice I saw. I'm curious to see how many of those sophomores kind of emerge into varsity roles this mm-hmm. year. Um, you know, saw Jonas Kaiser getting a look in the varsity. Jack uh, Reffitt, um, Carson Pollock, right. uh, Grant Clark is a kid who had a health issue during football season. Didn't play football, but he could be a kid who. I mean, he's just a big, strong kid, and he, yeah. he, he's kind of an undersized post. He's like six one, but he can kind of bang. You know, he might be a guy in the post. We'll see if he gets a look. Um, but you know, we Owen Prater is a guy who is. Really worked on his game since last year. Was I think he's going to be a starter. Uh, Tanner Reinertz is a guy who's just a really good shooter at six two, and then you know Bryce Bog, Bog, Bogger had a really good uh, sectional game against Lewis Cass, and he plays some ball outside of uh, school, some AAU ball. So it'll be, I, I think so. It'd be interesting to see, and he's a really good defender. Uh, so they've got guys to fill roles. It was interesting. Rob Malco compared Drew Bowers to Steve Nash. Hmm. Who's what in the Hall of Fame? Yeah, <laughs> two-time NBA MVP he goes. He just knows when to look for his own shot and knows when to to set up his teammates. Yeah, because I mean Drew's a point guard, but he also led the JV in scoring last year. Right, and you know obviously you talk about a lot of those names, and we we saw them play last year. They they were uh, key pieces to a very good uh, junior varsity team last yeah. year. Yeah, so I mean they're obviously going to be a lot younger this year than they were last year, but. I think a lot of those, uh, I think a lot of those players, you know, have uh, potential to really step up and have good years. I would throw Hunter Honkamp into that mix. Yeah, I mean, he he could. I mean, 
you know, I think a lot of these guys will get five quarters a night, and we'll see how it shakes out. Yeah. But again, it's it's a team. It's not, and you know, again, I the and it's who's going to emerge as a leader as well? Because mm-hmm. I mean, the, they had a lot of leadership last year with Paul, especially with Paul and Aiden, yeah. but even Luke and 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 Brock were were leaders yeah. as yeah. well. So I think that's going to be uh, interesting. Again, the the schedule is, uh, you know, the Valley game got moved to Friday, December twenty second. So there's kind of that void in the schedule where the, it was like a two-week break between North Miami and the Wawa Sea Tournament. Now you don't have that. Mm-hmm. And then uh, they, added, they added Lewis Cass into the Old Valley slot on the schedule. So they're going to they play 21 in regular season games instead of 20. Mm-hmm. So that's uh, something that will be a little different. Yeah. Should be interesting. Obviously a little bit different looking TRC this year than, than last year with Valley not being in there. So, um, you know, Lewis Cass um, – had a really good year last year, but they graduated a lot as well. So it'll be interesting to see yeah. how that uh, TRC uh, shakes out. You I think was, Wabash should be, you know, pretty competitive. Uh, Manchester, obviously. I, I'm going with Manchester. Yeah. With Bet- Betton and those guards. I mean, they're, I mean, they're really good, and they're really now they've got a, another year of experience under their belt. Yeah. Uh, Peru will be really solid with Retker and Ross, yeah. but uh, how how will the rest of the team fill out? around them with Coach Smith. I don't think, you know, he was a longtime assistant to Eric Thompson. I don't think he's going to change that much. And, of course, Wabash with their big three, Ford, uh, Daughtry, and Wright. I mean, yeah. they will be solid. And, they, they you know, they know what, what Coach Wright expects from them. Yeah. And that's a team, though. That's a Wabash team. I, it'll be curious to see if they can handle the physicality of, say, a Manchester, you know, when you go up against Benton or against Peru. But one thing you know about Wabash is they will be ready to go in March and yeah. uh, when they have to travel to Lewis Cass for that sectional. And uh, you know McConaughey, obviously they they've got oh, Josiah yeah. Ball back, but uh, oh you yeah, know, him, yeah, Bauer, Bauer yeah. Maple graduated, but Bauer so. Maple graduated, but they, I mean they're, that McConaughey team can be really athletic yeah. still with Kelly and Fuddy Kyle and yeah. Ball. Ooh, they, they're going to get up and down the court again. I yeah. would imagine. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised to Ball average twenty five. I'm ser- mm. seriously, he's, yeah, he's he's a he's capable, and b they'll play at that tempo that will allow him to do that. Yeah. Yeah, it should be an interesting season there for uh, Coach Malco. Again, they open up a Wednesday at Culver. We'll be up there for that one from John R. Nelson Gymnasium. If you haven't got a chance to see that gym, boy, they they did a great job they with did. that. They did, yeah. Yeah, it, yeah. Looks, it looks wonderful. Mm-hmm. The Argus Dragons uh, went 15-8 and eight last year for head coach Jason Breeden coming back for his third season, but you talk about graduation losses. Uh, I think what four out of the five starters graduated, including uh, one Mr. J.J. Morris. Yeah, so this is going to be an interesting team. Uh, they had a scrimmage last night against New Prairie, and again, take this for what it's worth because it was a scrimmage. But Sean Richard had 21 points in that scrimmage, and uh, I talked with Jason Breeden the other day, and he talked about not only uh, Sean is. Uh, really taking on a lot of the leadership role. And we saw that in the soccer field, too. And he's mm-hmm. going to do that in basketball. Mm-hmm. He's, he's talking to these young guys in terms of just little t- little details that he kind of learn after playing varsity basketball. So, you know, Sean is going to be, you know, obviously a key uh, component to this team. He's the only senior in the program. And you've got two juniors in Luke Stoltz and Hayden Hensler. I think Hayden's, you know, we know about Luke. I mean, he, you know, Luke, uh, last year he just decided he was going to get every rebound. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's just a, a force on the boards, and uh, look for looking forward to see uh, him take a step. And then, um, the, the, then you know, there there are three uh, sophomores in Gabe McMillan, Matt Calhoun, and Dominic Burns. But the freshman class is the intriguing one: Kenyon Belden, Makai Austin, Zane Hellams, and Fabian Olivares. We know about uh, Makai's sister Sophia; uh, she plays on the uh, girls' team at Argus. Uh, Belden, we saw him on the soccer pitch. He's a strong, athletic freshman. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the kid who played really well in the um, scrimmage was Hellams. Uh, played a, at a really nice uh, game, um, six foot freshman. Mm-hmm. So we'll see how this team does. But they've got, um, uh, in a lot of ways, the freshman class might be a little bit more advanced than the sophomore class at this point. So let's see how those freshmen, how they meld with Richard and Stultz, who are obviously the two most experienced guys back. Yeah, yeah. Should be uh, should be an interesting yeah. season for Coach Breeden. I talked with Coach Breeden about um, defensively because they played a lot of zone last year, and he, he he is determined not to do that this year. He is a man-to-man coach. He does not like playing zone. They they basically just kind of had to at times last yeah. year, but uh, he doesn't want to do that. They want to get back to that man-to-man defense, and he's you know that's I mean that's part of his fiber, part of his being. Yeah. 
Dragons open up on the road at Bremen on Wednesday as well. And it's, yeah, it's going to be a tough con- – the Hoosier Plains Conference will be tough. Lakeland Christian's good. Bethany Christian's good. But uh, Tyson Chupp. Mm-hmm. Uh, Elkhart Christian will be good. Uh, Coach uh, Hibbard's son is on that team. It's going to be a tough, tough race. I mean, Trinity Greenlawn will be – uh, you know they're always pesky. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, and South Bend Career Academy beat Laville in last year's sectional. South Bend Career Academy is they're they're not a pushover either. So yeah. And Hoosier Plains Conference this, this might be the best be the last year of the Argus in the Hoosier Plains, but it'll be a tough conference I think. Yeah. Yep. Looking forward to that as they get going on Wednesday. So let's take another quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about the cast and comments and the Culver Cavaliers. Evans Agency is here to match you with the best insurance solutions that fit your needs. Whether you need coverage for home, business, auto, or life, Evans Agency will make sure you have the protection you need no matter what life throws your way. With a heart and a hand for friendship, Evans Agency is here for you. Call 574-224-6988 or visit online at www.evansagencyllc.com. Here at Timbercrest Senior Living Community, residents and independent living are able to enjoy an active lifestyle and a beautiful campus. With plenty of activities, including walking and biking paths, fitness classes and social events, there's always something for residents to engage in to benefit their mental, physical, and spiritual well-being. Contact us today to schedule a tour and discover the active lifestyle and beautiful campus our residents enjoy every day. Say hello to a whole new world of growing possibilities with Nutrient Ag Solutions. Let the experts at Nutrient Ag Solutions help you realize the highest crop yield with the most sustainable solutions possible. Stop by their local location just east of Fulton or call at 574-857-3555 or visit online at www.nutrientagsolutions.com to see how Nutrient can help you. New Holland, Rochester knows that farmers need equipment they can trust and rely on. That's why for over 125 years, New Holland has been innovating to develop the best and most sustainable products available for our customers. Check out our full fleet that includes our lineup of small compact tractors online at www.NewHollandRochester.com or stop in at one of our locations in Rochester or Logansport to see how we can serve you. Welcome back here, talking sports with Val. Cast and comments last year go eight and fifteen for Coach Carl Davis as he moves into his seventh season at the helm of the Comets. They'll open up at Lakeland Christian on Tuesday. What do we know about Caston? Well, um, this is a team that you know it was kind of a I don't know if you'd call last year a rebuilding year, but it was just kind of a you know that. It was a lot of new kids who were new to the varsity. After all the kids, they graduated in 2022. Right. I mean, this was kind of a new look team. I think there's, you know, there's just another year of familiarity, and then they're adding some new, some, then there's some other guys, some newcomers, and just some kids who maybe haven't played a lot of varsity ball before. Really going to get that expanded role this year. Obviously, it starts the kind of the nucleus of this team are the two guards with um, Caleb Stinson and Talon Zider. I mean, Caleb is. You know he's 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 the point guard now. He didn't play soccer this year. Really worked hard in the weight room. He's really, I mean, he's just explosive. He just has an explosive first step, mm-hmm. and he's really worked on his in his shots. Really improved as well. And then you've got Talon Zider, who's one of the best shooters, you know, probably in the conference, I would imagine. And then, um, you know, uh, you know, but I mean, there are other you know Grant Yadon has really come along. I think Grant's going to play a much bigger role on the basketball court. I mean, he's kind of, he was kind of a back of this year. I think he's, you know, he's listed at six three, and he, he again, he's just such a broad-shouldered kid. Right. I mean, if he wants a rebound, and good luck boxing him out. But th- then there's some some other guys. You know, look, Corbin Smith hasn't played a lot, but he's, you know, he's he's really improved according to Coach Davis. Then they got a freshman big guy in Lane Hook. Um, we think he's around what six three, six four. Mm-hmm. Who's, he, it looks like he's going to play a role right away. So. Because um, I think there was a lot of concern about what are they going to do after Kane Shanelob graduated. And mm-hmm. Kane was a kid who really could affect it. I mean, he was a really good rim protector, mm-hmm. I mean, on, on, as a shot blocker. And, you know, the, um, defensively, I think that's something they, they want to get back to, that defensive identity that they had. Again, it's, it's a switching man, and it just, um, you know, how well do they communicate and how well they can, can they stop teams. Um, it's, it's such a unique defense. I mean, Coach... 
Uh, you know, it was funny talking with Eric Thompson at who was at Peru last year, and he he said that Carl Davis's switching man is way more sophisticated than my than my switching man is what he said. So, um, but I mean, I let's see if they can get back to that defensive identity. But if this is a team that uh, you know you're not gonna you're not gonna muscle them around. You talk about the strength and conditioning for the girls mm-hmm. team. I think it's the same for the boys team. Mm-hmm. Don't be surprised if Alex Craig takes on a bigger role this year as well. Yeah. It's this gonna is, be a, it's gonna be an exciting year, I think. They've, they've uh, had six seniors on the team, yeah. And even you know, when you look at a guy like Gavin Molenkoff, I mean, he's a sophomore, but he's he's much more experienced than your typical sophomore, yeah. And he's a, he's another guy who's just a dirty work. I'll do whatever I have I can do to help. I, I'll to, I can do to help this team win, which is kind of the role that Bryce Rudisill played two years ago. Yeah, yeah, it should be interesting. They go to Lakeland Christian on Tuesday Ooh, night. That is a tough first game. Lakeland yeah. Christian's very good. Um, you know, Kasson plays a tough non-conference schedule, mm-hmm. um, but uh, yeah, and then they, you know they got Lewis Cass early on in that uh, Cass County tournament too. Mm-hmm. So uh, again, I, I'll be curious to see how this team matures over the course of the season. But again, it's six seniors, so a, yeah. a veteran a veteran team, and uh, you know we'll see how they we'll see how they handle it. I'll be curious to see what Lewis Cass looks like. That, that might be a game that Kasson can uh, can maybe grab. I read an article. They're kind of a Guard oriented team. Um, yeah. Coach Johnson is gone, but his son is back for his sophomore year, and his son's probably going to be the starting point guard. From okay. what we've heard, but guard oriented is what is the phrase I've heard to describe Lewis Cass. <laughs> yeah, after uh, having so much height last year, obviously that uh, graduated with Chambers and and, and uh, Tyson Good. Yeah. yeah, so great run that they right. had. And there. of course, Hayden McLean hit. <laughs> How many huge three pointers did he hit mm-hmm. during their tournament run? Right. He graduated also, so we'll see. Yeah. We'll see what they like. Coach Brands, and new one was the assistant under Coach Johnson. So we, we'll see how much he changes things. Yep. Cavaliers coming off of a 12 and 13 season for Coach Kyle Evans. He is now in his fourth year at Culver. Boy, it's hard to believe he's been there for four years yeah. already. And we talked about that uh, opener. They host Rochester on Wednesday. Well, first of all, let's um, talk about the coaching situation because both Nice uh, brothers are not on the coaching staff anymore because they're the co-head coaches of the girls' team. Right. So Coach Evans was able to get Coach Mike Elliott out of retirement. Nice. Obviously, okay. Mike Elliott is Kyle Elliott's brother, but Mike is yeah. – we know Kyle is a basketball coach, but Mike's coached a lot of basketball himself, especially uh, the, maybe more in the middle school level. Yeah, he was, he was my eighth-grade coach. Okay, yeah, so yeah. Mike is back on the bench. He'll be hopping out, and then Coach uh, Hotstetler – who uh, worked with Coach Evans at North Judson? He's back on the staff. This is like the seventh year they've been working together. So okay. uh, the coaching staff is settled, and I think it's a it's a pretty good situation considering there was a, you know he had to find somebody pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, but uh, the two guys we need to talk about are two newcomers. Uh, first is Jack Rogers, mm-hmm. who he is a move in from Culver Academy, and he's going to be the point guard. And Coach Evans is really excited about him. We he has talked about him a little bit on the football field. Yeah, and yeah. he is quick. Ex- I think explosive. I'm tr- I'm trying to remember the word Coach Evans used in his conversation with me. Explosive, I think, was one of the words he talked about. I mean, he's very quick. Um, his basketball career was kind of injury prone at Culver Academy. He just didn't get a lot of, re- and then again, he was on a really talented team. Right, so right. playing time was not. He didn't get a ton of playing time. But he goes, you know, co- Coach Evans goes. We had the best point. He goes, I thought we had the best point guard in the Hoosier North the last two years with Ethan Keller, and I still think we have the best point guard in the Hoosier North, except mm-hmm. it's Jack Rogers this time. And on top of that, there's the other newcomer, and I'm hoping I'm pronouncing his name right, but it's Adria Guasp. And he is a foreign exchange student from Spain, mm-hmm. and um, he's a, he can he can really shoot it. Mm-hmm. And Coach Evans said, you know, he came to pre- – I mean, this apparently he was just – he couldn't wait for practice to start a couple weeks ago, and apparently he's a kid who – uh, Coach Evans really said he just had a good idea of like when to speed up and when to slow down. He, had, he could, you could just tell he was really well coached in Spain, and so he thinks he's going to be a big factor right away. Mm-hmm. And then you add him to David Height, who's the leading returning scorer. Right. And David had a really nice sophomore year last year. And then you've got Ethan Binion, who will be, you know, he, he had a lot of JV experience. Now he's basically a full time varsity. We'll see what Ethan can do. Ethan's got to get, you know, he's going to get some rebounds. He's going to have to get some rebounds, I think, mm-hmm. to help them out. And then you get the McEwen brothers, you know Jonas and Caleb. So it'll be interesting to see how this team meshes right off the bat. But if it, I don't think Rochester goes into Culver and just steamrolls them that first game. That's, you know, it was fifty-one forty-nine Rochester last year. I think we have another close game this time. Yeah, I thought Culver really did a nice job hanging with the Zebras last year. So it'll be interesting to see right what uh, what it looks like going into uh, John R. Nelson. Yeah, it's just gonna be a different looking Culver team. No Ethan Keller, no Shane Schumann, no Mano Ortiz. Mm-hmm. 
no uh yeah i mean it's no oliver uh morgan no uh joey uh, Pizer. so it's going to be a different looking culver right. team but coach evans he was very very enthusiastic about rogers and adria hmm. yeah you know he's going to get uh, everything he can out of those players mm -hmm. i mean that's the thing i really like about kyle he just uh He's able to uh, to get 110 percent out of everybody, right? And that and that defense that they play is just there's nothing really like it. It's a, a zone zone trap, mm -hmm. and nobody quite plays the defense that Wade Culver does. But they they really buy into it, you know. Mm -hmm. All right, should be a good one. We'll be up there as we said against uh, for the Cavaliers hosting Rochester on Wednesday, the traditional Wednesday before Thanksgiving opening day game. For the zebras and the cavaliers yeah hey yeah. did you see the uh the cavalier mascot no i did not you did not see the cavalier mascot mm -hmm. so they they have they're looking for a name but they have officially have a or they have an official mascot which i thought they had a mascot before but apparently it was not an official mascot mm -hmm. but it was kind of funny because somebody said well that looks like mike zayner <laughs> <laughs> you'll have to see it it was on uh, it was on uh, facebook i think so but uh so it said it looked like Mike Zayner in a Cavalier outfit. So mm -hmm. maybe they can call it Mikey the Cavalier. Yeah. I don't know. We'll take another break here before it gets too deep in here and uh, <laughs> come back. We got the uh, Panthers, the Vikings, and the Warriors to talk about here on Talking Sports with Val. RTC is partnering with the Fiber Gaming Network program. If you live in a zip code that RTC Fiber Communications provides service to, you can participate for free. The Fiber Gaming Network is affiliated with eSports and is offering cash prizes for competitions every week. If you have an account, sign in today and register for upcoming events, and if you don't, simply visit www.fibergamingnetwork.com and create a free account to get started. Are you ready to take your home's comfort to the next level? The Insulation Guys can evaluate your attic, walls, basement, and crawl space to determine where insulation can be added or upgraded. Our expert team delivers high quality insulation solutions, not only improving your home's comfort, but also lowering your energy bills. Call us today for a free quote at 574-223-3626 or visit us online at www.theinsulationguys.net. My name is Tasha Mitchell, and I am a commercial lender for Alliance Bank. Behind me is the spreader I currently use to applicate dry fertilizer product. Very unexpectedly did I become a commercial banker. I've only been a commercial banker for about nine months, and with my ag experience, it has really helped me. I would choose Alliance Bank because even though they have seven branches, they are a very community-oriented bank. They give a lot back to the community, and their clients are their top priority. Looking for a better way to incentivize your staff or provide them with custom apparel to boost morale? Allow the Winning Edge to set you up with a custom edge store tailored to your business needs. Whether you need supplies for your fundraiser or shirts with your business logo on them, the Winning Edge can help you set up an online one-stop shop. Call today at 574-223-6090 or visit their website at www thewinningedgeathletics.com. All right, welcome back here as we move into our final segment of the afternoon. And Pioneer Panthers coming off of a 5-19 and season for Coach Darren McCaig. He is going into his fourth season as well. They, uh, they've got a little bit of time yet. They don't open up their season until the 28th in uh, the Cass County Tournament. Yeah, um... And obviously, the, the kind of the, the marquee player for Pioneer is Drew McCagg, mm -hmm. who has had a really good year last year. Uh, I talked with Coach McCagg, and he talked about kind of wanting him to improve, maybe improve his shot selection a little bit. He, he put so much on his shoulders last year, and just, um, just not not necessarily take fewer shots, but take better shots. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, um, you know, but again, it was, uh, you know, and part of that is, you know. Again, Drew, you can just tell Drew works hard at his game. He's worked hard on improving his body as well. So I'll see, I was curious to see now that he's got this experience how, how well he'll do. Uh, and then, the, you know, they've got a veteran point guard in Braden Erickson. You know, Braden really came on last year and really improved his shot and um, just his, his kind of his floor leadership. And then they've got Ryland Toloza healthy back for the full season. Mm -hmm. And I think Ryland will, you know, again, he's a guy who's – it's not, in talking to Coach McKeg, they really want to kind of get out and run a little bit this year, 
And R- Ryland Toulouse is one of the main reasons why, because if you can get him out in transition, you can get a couple <laughs> buckets that way. Yeah. Because, again, he's the really, really fast. And then, uh, you know, you've got some veterans and uh, guys like Luke uh, Blackman and Lucas Perry who will be back. But, um, and, you know, Mike Aranz, he's got some hip and back issues still lingering from football. But I think they're hoping to have him at some point. He's a really, you know, he's only 5'6", but he's really athletic. Mm-hmm. And then um, he t- Coach McKegg talked a lot about these four freshmen, Mason Shaver, Shiloh Ryan, Lane Weldy, and Brody Howard. So they're really, all of them are love, ba- love basketball, are really are really going to uh, play a factor right off the bat. Mm-hmm. So we'll see what, well, I'm curious to see what kind of impact those guys will have with the veterans. But um yeah, I mean, obviously it was a rough year last year, but I mean, I, you know, they're going to play their zone. I, I, I think if they can, if they can miss Caleb Sweet, but I think if they can maybe get some more scoring out of some of these newcomers, I think it'll help out and take some of the burden off Drew. Because again, Drew, not only is he expected to score, but he's expected to rebound as well. Yeah, tough opener for him as they will take on Logan Sport at the Berry Bowl for their first game. So, boy, that's going right into the flames. Right, right, right. Won't be easy. Um. They did make a couple of schedule adjustments. They added South Newton and they added Demont Christian. Mm-hmm. So I, I think there's, yeah, there's some there's some winnable uh, games. I think it's a good schedule um, for for Pioneer, and I think it'll help get them ready for uh, Hoosier North play. Yeah, we should mention too, um, changing the coaching staff. Thomas Planalp is uh, took a uh, coaching job with the women's basketball team at St. Mary's of the Woods. Which I think is that down in the French Lick or Terre Haute, Terre Haute area. Yeah. Yeah. So he has been replaced by Dakota Williams, who is uh, he's also the cross country coach, and he's going to be helping out with Coach uh, McKay. Okay, on the boys' team. Yep. Uh, Tippecanoe Valley, Joe Luce in his second season. They had a, a great season, eighteen and six last year. They will open up Wednesday against Mishawaka. Uh, a couple graduated. Yeah, but uh, got some pieces coming back and some some new faces as well. Yeah, eighteen and six, and four of their six losses were to teams that at least won their sectional. Mm-hmm. And of course, one of those four was to Northwood, who won state. So, yeah, I mean, if you beat Valley last year, you were a good team. Mm-hmm. It took a good team, but they lose Tate Kaiser to graduation. They lose Nolan Cumberland to graduation, and there's more bad news. Riley Shepard has a broken foot, and he won't be. He will not be back. They're hopeful to have him back for that Delta tournament, which is that week between Christmas and New Year's. Oh boy! So late December, yeah. he broke it. He, they apparently he might have gotten some. Uh, well, I shouldn't. I shouldn't say that. He he broke his foot over the summer, and he's he's out for. They hope to have him back by December. But he's, it's been a slow recovery, and he might have re-injured the foot along the way. But yeah, oh boy. so he'll be back. Yeah. So that that will hurt because I mean. Again, to have a kid like Riley, who's what a good six five, six six, and he can yeah. really shoot it. Yeah. Boy, they'll miss him. Um, so, um, but we need to, the other guy. We need to talk about. So, without him, you know, Ian Cooksey moves up from the JV to the varsity, and Ian had a great summer, from mm-hmm. what Coach Luce told me. Um, there, were, he had like a game where he scored thirty. I mean, we we saw Ian shoot in that JV game. I mean, when he's on, he is a great streak shooter. He is. And I looked at Ian at picture that he is at least six three. I mean, he is not tiny either, so he can shoot over the top. A lot of guys. He had a good tennis season, so look for Ian Cooksey to play a role right off the bat. And then you know, Kyler Johnson is a returning starter. Stephen Acosti is going to move is move, move into the varsity lineup full time now. Mm-hmm. You know, Stephen's a kid who's um, he's going to get more touches this year, and I think it'll be interesting to see how his offensive game develops because a lot of his points last year came on putbacks and. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, stuff that Tate and Nolan kind of generated for him. Right. Can he create his own shot this year? Right. And then uh, uh, another guy that um, Coach Luce talked about was DeAndre Hamilton. DeAndre had a nice JV uh, season last year, and boy, he, and he's just really impressed um, the coaching staff in practice. Mm-hmm. So look for DeAndre. To, you know, they'll just <laughs> just what they need a more height. <laughs> this mm-hmm. is a team that's going to be pretty big again, mm-hmm. even without Tate and Nolan. Uh, it's going to be pretty long and athletic. But we'll see this team develop. But again, without Riley. Might this team be a team that will maybe it'll get it'll get better as the season goes on? But it's a, they play a tough schedule too. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, again, it's kind of a funky schedule. The first they play seven in a row at home to start the year. Hmm. Seven in a row at home, and fifteen of the twenty-two are home games. Probably the most impacted by the non-conference part of that, as far as the teams that Valley has. Yeah, I mean football, it kind of just fell into place. Volleyball seemed like it fell into place. Basketball, the basketball schedule was a work in progress up until basically the very end when they just yeah. had to finalize the schedule. So yeah. we'll see how it goes. Uh, this is a team that, uh, again, 
you know, Coach Luce is a man-to-man coach, and they, they really, boy, if they wanted to shut you down last year, they could shut you down. I mean, they, uh, it's a tough, you know, it's, uh, but again, Tate Kaiser was a, just a great defender, so I'll be cu- curious to see how, how good they are getting stops as this season progresses. But Riley Shepard's injury is something they'll have to overcome. We should mention another new kid, Davis Cowan. He's going to be their point guard. Mm-hmm. He's a move-in from Fort Wayne Canterbury. And he's a kid who Coach Luce described him as maybe more of a distributor type of point guard than maybe a scorer. He'll score a little bit, but I think he's going to be looking more to set up his teammates. Mm-hmm. But look for Cooks. Uh, Cooksey is the guy. I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing what he does. Yeah. And I don't think anybody yeah. moving up from that JV is going to have any problems because, I mean, they had a really good JV last year. And yeah. I think that, uh, you know, it's, yeah. it's just kind of a feeder system that uh, is really built up right now for Valley. Yeah, I mean, it's something that Coach – Loose takes very seriously to have a good JV team, and because yeah. the, and how what it leads to. Now we should we should also mention Nate Parker, who was the point guard in the JV last year. He is out for the season. Mm-hmm. He had foot surgery. Uh, I would say that's a, I'm ling- lingering from football is what I assume. Yeah, yeah, probably from that toe. But yeah, saw him, yeah. saw him the other day. He was on crutches. So yeah, you know Nate. Uh, uh, what do you feel for Nate? I mean, what a year he had, and yeah. a, a kid who will do anything for his team. Yeah. Yeah, that was just amazing what he did in that Shatard game. Yeah. Just to play, mm-hmm. not only that, but to do what he did. So. Yeah. Um, so we'll see. But, yeah, I mean, Kyle, look for Kyler Johnson to play, maybe play a bigger role this year. I mean, yeah. Kyler's another guy who's – I think he's listed at – I haven't seen a roster. I think he's listed at 6'4", 6'5", and he looks he looks like at least 6'6". Yeah. When I yeah. saw him. Yeah. He's big. Yeah. <laughs> I I didn't realize how big he was until we did do that uh, Shatard game, and mm-hmm. I was like, He's really big. Yeah. Not only tall, but he's big. Yeah. 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 So he's going to be a load inside. You know, if he he wants, to, like you said, you know, if he wants to get a rebound, he'll get it. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, it leaves us with Winnemac uh, for first year coach head uh, head coach Mike Springer. They were nine and sixteen last year, and they open up on Tuesday versus Twin Lakes. So. Yeah. I got to meet Coach Springer the other day, and uh, to the Winnemac community, I'd say, you're, you're going to like your new coach. I mean, he is a, he's a great guy. Uh, if we went, It was funny. I've never had a coach email me a resume before, but he did, and I'm glad he <laughs> did because he's been in coaching. This is his 40th year in coaching, and he has been – he has been a boys basketball head coach. He's been a girls basketball head coach. He's been a boys basketball assistant coach. He's been a girls basketball assistant coach. He has coached at the college level men. He has coached college level women. He's coached been an assistant college coach. He's been an assistant women's college basketball coach. He was the girls basketball coach at L- Logansport from 1998 through 2000. Really? He was the girls coach at Eastern from 03 through 08. And then he went to Indiana Wesley, and he was the assistant women's coach there for five years. Then back to Eastern was the head boys coach for nine years. So he's got all this experience, and uh, you know he uh, he had some uh, his wife I think had some family up in kind of the region area. So when you saw the Winnemac job open up, he decided to apply for it. So even though he's new to Winnemac, he is not new to coaching, and he's gonna <laughs> he's gonna bring some ideas. Now he's got a pretty veteran roster that he's taking over. When you talk about um, Brendan Hines, yeah. when you talk about John Malco. When you talk about Will Malco and when you talk about Jace Bentel. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, these are kids that are pretty athletic. All of them can kind of, ha- you know, obviously Brendan is probably more the point guard, but all of them can handle the ball at least a little bit. Yeah. And they're, they're comfortable with the ball in their hands. Uh, they don't have a ton of size. Mm-hmm. So we'll see how um, that moves on. But, again, uh, and it sounds like talking to Coach uh, Springer, he kind of wants to get after it a little bit defensively mm-hmm. and force some turnovers and get – kind of get out of the open court because I think they're they're take advantage of that speed yeah yeah but you know I mean his first coaching job was at Christian High School in Peoria Illinois in 1983 Hmm. so he he was a head coach at that would be uh, 40 years ago yeah so he (laughs) has he has been around he was an assistant coach at Taylor uh, so one of his mentors is Paul Patterson who's a legendary coach at Taylor so uh yeah I I mean I again I get it. I mean, coaches are evaluated by you know wins and losses, and he knows that as well as anybody. But Winnemac, to the Winnemac community, obviously, you are going to like your head coach mm-hmm. in terms of uh, his mentality, and he's just a super guy. So we'll see if they can win some games now with this group. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was a you know obviously they suffered that tough loss to Wabash in last year's sectional semifinal. So we'll see how much they've improved and how much they've gained through that year of experience. Yeah. Yeah, it should be an interesting season for them. I know, like you said, not a not a lot of height there, but uh, they can take advantage of that speed and the quickness. And 
You know, Brendan Hines really impressed me from uh, his freshman year to his sophomore year. Uh, not only did he grow physically, but mm-hmm. uh, his game grew a lot as well. So I'm curious to see what he looks like now as a junior. Yeah, uh, a point guard who can shoot, a yeah. point guard who can yeah. score. But uh, this yeah. is, uh, you know, I'll be, I'll be curious to see what kind of off, kind of type of offense they run. Yeah. Should be good. Uh, so everybody except for Pioneer will be opening up next week and get a game in there before yeah. Thanksgiving. Curious to see how Winnemag does. They, I think they have to, have to travel to Twin Lakes on Tuesday night. Of course, Twin Lakes won their 3A sectional last year. Uh, but so it's is always it, a, Is it at Twin Lakes or, or I, I had it at home? Okay. Oh, I think you're right. Yeah. Home against Twin Lakes. But yeah. it's a Twin Lakes team, you know, Coach Adams. I mean, he does a great, great job there. And they won their sectional last year, kind of coming out of nowhere. So yeah. we'll see, you know, how Winnemag does. And then they play Rochester early on, which is, will be a little bit of a sectional preview. Yeah. All right, should be good. Um, so we actually have a couple minutes here. Anything else you want to talk about? I know wrestlers are uh, – have they had any meets yet? I know the girls have. Have the boys had any meets yet? Let's talk about wrestling. Rochester's first dual meet is tonight at Manchester. Okay. And I uh, talked with Coach Clint Gard earlier. I'm going to write that up soon. Uh, but this is a team that uh, obviously you know, they – uh, they have four, um, two returning state placers and two other returning state qualifiers. When you talk about um, Brady Beck, Brady Beck goes from 220 to heavyweight. He's put on about 40 pounds since last year. He was wrestling once a week, doing a, doing a wrestling workout during football season. Mm-hmm. I mean, he is very motivated, and he won that IHPO, which is the big preseason uh, tournament they have in like August hmm. for kind of a pre- season preview tournament, and he yeah. won heavyweight. Oh, so Brady's going up to heavyweight this year, but he is. He's very determined. I mean, he's he's. <laughs> I, I don't know how we, where he gets the energy from, but Alex Deming again. All the weight classes are a little bit different this year. They, uh, we won't explain that totally I mean, every single one, but it's still 14 weight classes. But they they changed uh, Alex Deming going from 195 to 215. Uh, Colin Wean from 170 to 190, um, and the big one Declan Gard going from 145 to 175. Oh wow! I saw Declan the other day. He's he has grown. He's he's kind of got that baby face, but he's he's bulked up. And it's uh, Ethan Amaskeet is going to be at 157. I'm really ex- excited to see what Ethan can do f- um, for the year. Brant Beck goes from 160 to 165. Uh, DJ Basham's back. He'll be at probably at 138. Wyatt Davis is back. Of course, he was a state qualifier back in 2022. And they've got two really good freshmen. And Grant Holloway will be at 106. And Kale Schatz, who they, I think they hope to fit in at that 144, 150 type. Or, 144, 150 range along with Wyatt Davis. Yeah. So, I mean, a, and, lot, of, yeah. a lot of pretty high expectations, obviously, yeah. again. L- Lane Horn's another guy going up. 106 last year, 126 this year. Okay. So making some pretty good jumps there. Yeah. 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 So, but, uh, you know, it should be uh, should be interesting. I'm, I'm really looking forward They're to They're going to be favored in the yeah. TRC. I mean, that's no doubt about that. Uh, yeah. We'll see, though. Will they be favored in the Plymouth sectional? Yeah. Uh, well, know, that's the other thing. Yeah. I mean, their their route to Indy is completely different. Completely different. Yeah. And now they go to the Penn Regional. Well, they'll be running into Penn and Mishawaka kids. Rochester actually dropped Western from their schedule and from the dual meet schedule because Coach Guard was kind of like, well, if we're not going to wrestle these guys at regional or, or semi state, then maybe we should go in another direction. So, uh, and also Rochester added the Rensselaer uh, duels to the Joe Bourbon duels. To their schedule, they're not going to North Montgomery this year. They're going to Rensselaer instead. And there's also a girls' tournament of all, so they're taking everybody over, boys and girls, to that. Okay. It's the weekend before Christmas, the 21st and 22nd of December. So kind of so, rerouting a little bit more towards that region area. Yeah, yeah. so they can get more. And they will wrestle Mishawaka um, during the season. They will wrestle Penn during the season at <laughs> one of those Saturday tournaments. <laughs> Uh, not, a, not, a, not, a, not a duel, but a, one of those Saturday uh, tournaments. So they'll, they'll get their chances to face the, the big boys. Yeah, and I mean, you talk about wrestling powerhouses in the state. Mishawaka has just been, I mean, they've oh, been the tre- top tremendous, program. Tremendous program, and Penn has been tremendous also. Yeah, right. I mean, they, they just put out studs, you know, year after year. Yeah. And it's, so it's amazing, too, because Mishawaka and Penn physically are so close together, and but they're. They're huge schools, and, and they just continue to, to pump out wrestlers. Yeah, yeah. We should give a shout-out to the girls' program. Grace Hiram's ranked number two in the state at 150. Is it 155 or 157? Anyway, Grace is ranked number two in the state in her weight class. Uh, they won f- they, w- they won the team title at the uh, East Noble invite the other day. Be- 33 teams, and Rochester won it, girls. Grace Hiram's is great. Kyra Doran is a freshman who's really come on. Lane Pepler. Um, let, you know they got Lexi Hawes, Ryland Strasser's wrestling. Mm. Uh, this is a, 
all all nine girls finished fourth place or better, and they had four champions. This is going to be a good girls team. Um, they're going to it's in this. We're going to have a really exciting girls wrestling season. They got the Rochester invite tomorrow, and then of course Rochester will host the semi state uh, that first weekend in January. Yeah, and the state finals this year are at Kokomo for the so, girls. Yeah, so you won't have to travel that far if you want to. Yeah, go see them uh, down the road. A little closer than the boys. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> down in Evansville. So, yeah, I guess that'll make up for it. <laughs> yeah, right. Average is out to Indy, right? Yeah. <laughs> All but right. Uh, Grace Hiram is probably the most experienced. She had a great, great year last year. I think state runner-up, and yeah. uh, you can tell motivated to do even better. Uh, Lily, Lily Gerald <coughs> in there as well. Lily, yeah, she won her weight class. I think went 5-0 and with five pins at East Noble. Yeah, nice. <laughs> yeah. That's not a bad result. Mm-hmm. So, all right, anything else real quick? Oh. I think real quick. Do we have anything? <laughs> do I have to put the real quick on there? I'm, right? I'm, ta- I'm tapped out, Steve. Okay. Well, I hope everybody has a. I'm uh, sure I'll remember something after like two minutes after we yeah. get off the air. Hope everybody has a great first week of uh, basketball for uh, all of our teams, like we said, next week, except for the Panthers. And have a great Thanksgiving. And uh, we will be back in two weeks talking some sports with Val. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. <laughs>